Patty, this begins with, we have the Picadillo empanadas of the Immaculate Conception. Uh, th this is, <laughs> yes, well, you know, I mean, a little bit of an interesting tie-in, but tell us about the dish and, this, and what's the story behind it. Okay, it is, you know, it's, as you say, and first of all, let me thank you for having me here, talk with you as a guest. It's an honor for me, Lynn, having listened to you for years and years to be sitting next to you. Um, well, the Empanadas of the Immaculate Conception, and it is a funny name, but it really gives an example of the depth of Mexican cuisine, because when the Spanish people came to Mexico, there was already in place many strong regional cuisines that were highly complex and developed, as you say, with the chilies and the spices and the native ingredients. And when the Spanish people came to Mexico, they not only wanted to conquer the land and, you know, find everything that was in their, this country and bring it apart, but they wanted to conquer people's souls. So it was not only, you know, the, the, the money, the economy, the politics, it was religious as well. So they mm -hmm. brought in orders of nuns and they intermingled with the indigenous women um, in these convents. As they arrived, they established the different orders and they mixed their insanely sweet tooth. They brought the sugars and the caramels and the pastries and they mixed all that with the indigenous ingredients. And so these empanadas of the Immaculate Conception are just an example and it is a funny name because they're addicting you know, to have such a funny name, but it mixed the way that they made pastries with the Mexican ingredients, the, um, you know, the dried fruits and the um, tomato, you know, different ways to use them. So this has beef, sesame seeds, pork, tomato, cinnamon, raisins, almonds, olives. It's Baroque. It's just like the nuns, you know, it is, the, the, the food that came out of these convents is just wildly Baroque, just like their era was. And, you know, Mexican food was already complex, but the nuns just found a way to make it a little bit more complex because they could. And it was, for nuns, it was not only the magic of coming to this land and suddenly they were in the convents with not only Mexican society was highly, um, you know, it has it had deep lines in the hierarchy. So in these convents, they had indigenous girls working in the kitchen doing the corn and the tortillas. Yes. And they had the daughters and the nieces of Aztec emperors. You know, so it was cohabiting with these different levels of the indigenous society and the intensity of these nuns that couldn't marry. And so they put all of the passion into cooking. <laughs> and so that's why you get into these names like the Immaculate Conception. And the titles of the, the names of the desserts especially, you know, they're called Nuns Sighs and Hugs from Heaven. And there's one that's called Kiss Me Please. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> and this is interesting because as I was going through some of this material, I was thinking about, you see this in the Mediterranean, the work I did in Italy, you would see so many of the sweets, the very fancy things would come out of convents as well, and there would be things like the breasts of St. Barbara, who unfortunately <laughs> was martyred, and there would be things like, um, to be kind, the rear anatomy of the bishop, and, uh, the, <laughs> and whatever. But, we were talking on the phone. This is a complete aside, but I can't resist it. And I was saying to Patty, you've got to talk about, you know, where do these come from? And, and, and is there a tradition in Mexico of convent food? And she said, oh, yes. And I said, you know, I remember being at this museum in Santa Fe, and the director there was telling me she had just gotten a book from Mexico that was done on the food of the convents. And, there were, and, and, and it had beautiful pictures. Do you know it? And you practically leapt through the phone. Tell the story, because yeah, here it is. I, I have it. Yes, we have it. Yes, we have the book. What do you mean, I have it? <laughs> yeah, no, it is fabulous. And it has, and, and Lynn asked me to brought it, because it is really just 
a marvel to see it's a piece of art it has gorgeous photos and the beauty of it is that the authors really you can tell that they're in love with the topic and they have so much respect for the content so the recipes are written in the way they were written before and it is just beautiful you know they will say take a couple of oh my english escapes me of you know handfuls or you know how much will fit in your glass or you know the way they did the measures or you know and and things that we have lost i feel in this era cooking to use your senses you know now they'll say cook things until they're translucent and brown and there it was until you can smell this or you get a sense of that or until you hear the sound of things that we we just we have lost with time i think